we continue this Sunday with our theme of what are you up to, thinking both about what Jesus is up to and what you and I are up to. This morning's gospel reading begins with the arrival of some strangers, some Greeks. They've come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And these Greeks who show up come to Philip, we're told, and say to him, Sir, sir, we wish to see Jesus. The Greeks were known to be big travelers. Maybe you remember from high school reading Homer's Odyssey about Odysseus, who was such a restless inquirer, who traveled to faraway lands to see the places and get to know the people there. But these are different Greeks in our scripture lesson this morning. These are Greeks who've shown up in Jerusalem right about the same time that Jesus has. And we don't really know that much about these Greeks, except that it strikes me that they seem to have pretty good manners. Many times in our gospel readings, when people wanted to see Jesus, they'd come running up to him and just barge right in or dare to touch the robe, the hem of his garment. But these Greeks don't come rushing in. Instead, they approach not Jesus, but one of the disciples, a disciple named Philip. Maybe they came to Philip because Philip is a Greek name. Maybe they felt they might have something in common with Philip. And it's interesting that right after they talk to Philip, Philip turns around and talks to another disciple, Andrew, who also has a Greek name. So these people have something in common. Maybe that's what they think. When, they, when these Greeks come and they want to talk to Jesus and see him, they, they come and they find someone who sounds a little bit like them and approaches those two disciples with the Greek names and tell them, we want to see Jesus. So Philip and Andrew pass this message along to Jesus. And you would think that Jesus would be very excited to have these strangers, these Greeks, come to him looking to see him. I mean, for verses and chapters now in the Gospel of John, Jesus has been talking about how he has come into the world not just for the Jews, but for everybody, even Greeks, even people like you or me. And so when he gets this message that these Greeks have arrived and want to see him, you'd think he'd go rushing right over and say, hi, I'm Jesus, nice to meet you, so glad you could make it. But he doesn't. Instead, he says this very strange thing, which is a little hard to follow, I think. Jesus says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Well, that seems kind of strange. He's suddenly talking about planting seeds and bearing fruit, and it just seems kind of odd. But the writer of John tells us that Jesus said these things because he wanted to talk about what was going to happen next, to tell the disciples about the kind of death he was about to suffer. So from Jesus' perspective, when he hears that the Greeks have arrived, he takes it as a message from God that the time has come, the hour has come. All of Jesus' hard work to reach out to so many people is now succeeding. He can tell because the Greeks have arrived and he knows that more people from other backgrounds are right behind them to see Jesus. Jesus' work here on earth is nearly done now, he knows. Now he moves on to be lifted up, to be lifted up first on the cross and then to be lifted up in this life to eternal life. So these Greeks, they wanted to see Jesus, and they will, but maybe not the way they expected. 
Jesus is saying they will see him when he is lifted up on the cross and then when he is lifted up again into heaven. The Greeks will see him. Others will see him. You and I will see him. This Sunday in Lent brings us just that much closer to Palm Sunday and to Holy Week. This Sunday, we're going downhill, down toward the valley of the shadow of death. We'll follow Jesus through Holy Week to Good Friday, to the crucifixion. We'll travel through that valley with him, but then the sun will rise. The sunshine will brighten everything and disperse all those dark shadows so that we too can see Jesus lifted up to new life, to eternal life, to resurrected life for you and for me. But today, perhaps, you find yourself in a valley, in a dark place. A few of us went to a workshop yesterday and were reminded how Often we think that our mission field and the people who need our help are out in the world, and so they are. But oftentimes people come in through our doors who also need our love and experience the love of God through us. So perhaps right here in this room with us this day are people who need to know God's love in our lives. Psalm 146, which Luke read to us from his children's Bible, reminds us not to put our trust in other people, not to put our trust in the rulers of this world or the princes of this world, in other mortals, but instead to put our trust in the Lord our God, our Lord who so loved this world that he gave his only son to be lifted up on that cross, that one day you and I might also be lifted up. Psalm 146 says, it is the Lord God who executes justice for the oppressed. It is God who gives food to the hungry and sets the prisoners free, who opens the eyes of the blind, who upholds the widow and the orphan. It is the Lord God who lifts up those who are bowed down. So if you are here and finding yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, fear not. You are not alone. The Lord God is always with us, even as we follow Jesus through the valley of the shadow of death. The Lord God will lift us up. Praise be to God. Amen.